Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. And next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. We can begin by stretching up high to the sky. <laughs> high as we can. And let's go down low. Touch our toes. Back up high one more time. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And while we're there, let's have a wave side to side. And then back down to touch our toes once more. Excellent, guys. And our hands on hips, so we can have a wiggle side to side. Stop, another wiggle side to side. Stop, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. And then we can go round and round. Round and round. Round and round, and stop. And then back the other way, guys. Round and round the other way. Give our spines a nice stretch. And stop. And now we'll shake it out. Arms and legs, shake it out. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So in math class recently, we've been doing a lot of work with decimals. And what we did in the previous lesson is we looked at how we can have decimals of different numbers or different amounts of digits that have the same value. Now, can anybody remember what term we give? Equivalent decimals. That's excellent. Very well remembered, guys. So remember, the word equivalent basically means the same. And we'll write that phrase on the board one more time. Equivalent, Q, U, I, V, A, L, E, N, T. Equivalent, or the same value, decimals. D, E, C, I, M, A, L, S. So all together, guys, equivalent, decimals. 
And there was a trick we learned how we can do equivalent decimals. And it's very easy once you know what to do. All we do for the second digit, we add a zero. If we have a one digit decimal place, all we do for the two digit decimal place is add a zero after the first digit. And that way we have tens and hundredths and they have the same or equivalent value. And what we're going to do now is a demonstration to show how we can do equivalent decimals with one digit and two decimal places. So ready guys, first of all, I need some numbers. So who can give me a number? Any number? Five. five. So five will be our whole number. And now our decimal point. So all the numbers that come after the decimal point are decimals. Who can give me another number? Three. Let's go with the number first. We'll go with three. 5.3. Now what I'll do is I will give one of my students a pen and they will demonstrate how to change this one digit decimal place number into a two digit decimal place number of the equivalent value. And simply by adding zero at the end. So let's see who can go first today. And today we'll begin with Lakgao. So Lakgao, come and join me at the front of class, please. So what's our number we have at the moment, guys? 5.3. So Lakgao, we have a one-digit decimal place number here. Can you turn it into a two-digit decimal place number of equivalent value? 5.30. You see, all we need to do is add the zero at the end. What we have here is three tenths. And here we have 30 hundredths. Well, three tenths and 30 hundredths actually mean the same value. So that's what we mean by equivalent decimals. One more time together, guys. 5.3 equals 5.30. Lakau, that was brilliant. Very well done. High five and a big round of applause for Lakau, please, guys. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate with some more numbers to show the trick of doing equivalent decimals. But first of all, I'll clean the board. Okay, guys, so who can give me another number? Any number. Nine. Okay. Nine point seven. Nine point seven. Okay. You can see nine is the whole number because it's to the left of the decimal point. Seven is the decimal number because it's to the right of the decimal point. But now we want a two digit decimal place number of equivalent value. So let's see who can do this for us now. Now we will go with Bang Bon. Bang Bon will show us how to do an equivalent decimal to 9.7. So Bang Bon, come and join me at the front of class. So here we have 9.7. Bang Bon, can you do the equivalent decimal with two decimal places? So we've got nine. Don't forget your decimal point. Decimal point, very important, well done. 9.70. Yes, you see, all we've done is we've added a zero at the end of the seven to go from one decimal place to two decimal places. Tenths, hundredths. Seven tenths is the same or equivalent of 70 hundredths. So, all together, guys, 9.7 equals 9.70. Bang Pong, that was brilliant. High five. Big round of applause for Bang Pong, please, guys. <laughs> so that was a recap of the previous lesson with equivalent decimals. We're going to stay with equivalent decimals today, too. So what we're going to be doing is equivalent decimals lesson two. But what we're doing, we're not going to start with one decimal place today we're going to start with two decimal places. And using the same trick, we will show how we can turn the two-digit decimal into a three-digit decimal. And it's exactly the same process. 
here we have 9.70. So this is the hundredths. Today we're going to be turning them into thousandths. And all we need to do, guys, is the same trick. We have 70. So who thinks what digit we add to the end of 70? All we need to do is add another zero. Each time for a different decimal place, we simply add a zero. So what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking about equivalent decimals from hundreds to thousands. So let's turn to have a look at our TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation about equivalent decimals, lesson two. So remember that word equivalent basically means the same. Equivalent value is the same value. And what we're going to do today is look at how decimal places from hundredths and thousandths have the same or equivalent value. A two decimal place number can be written as a three decimal place number. Yes. Just like in the previous lesson, we learned how a one digit decimal place number can be written as a two digit decimal place number. Tenths to hundredths. Today, we'll go from hundreds to thousands. But it's exactly the same trick. We just need to add a zero at the end. We do this by adding a zero after the two decimal place number. You see? If you look here in the top right-hand corner, the tenths, how many zeros? One. So then, if we want to go from tenths to hundredths, how many zeros? Two. All we need to do is add an extra zero. So what we'll do today is we go from hundredths to thousandths. And how many zeros here? Three. So we just add another zero again. That's the simple process. Decimal hundredths and thousandths with the same value are called equivalent decimals. So like I keep saying, that word equivalent basically means the same. So let's take a look at how to do it. What number can we see here, guys? Zero. 0 0.52 or 52. So, how many decimal places do we have now? Two. This is the hundredths. So, if we want to turn it into a three digit decimal place number to the thousandths, all we need to do is add a zero at the end 0 0.520. Yes. Now, the number on the left and the number on the right are the same, or equivalent value. 0.5200 is the same as 0.520 thousandths. So let's look at some more numbers, and you can tell me what we need to do. What number do we have now? 1.38 is correct. So... If we want to turn this into a three-digit decimal place number of the equivalent value, what do we need to add at the end? Zero. Every time we add zero. 1.380. It's exactly the same thing that we learned to do yesterday with tenths and hundredths. All we're doing today is going from hundredths to thousandths. One more decimal number but the same trick, just always use a zero at the end. So let's do a few more together, guys. Who can tell me what this number is? 2.24. How many decimal places? Two. You can see 
So if we want to turn it into three decimal places of the same value, what will the number be? 2.240 is correct. Well done. You see? Exactly the same. Equivalent value decimals. How about this one? 0 0.10. So if we want an equivalent decimal in thousandths, what will it be? Excellent. Even though we already have a zero here, all we do is add another zero on two. 0 0.100. One tenth is the same as one hundredth. It's equivalent decimals. And now we have 7.25 or 25 hundredths. Now what do we need to do to turn it into thousandths? Perfect. Excellent, guys. Well done. 25 hundredths is, is the same as 250 thousandths. It's equivalent decimals. All we're dealing with is an extra decimal place. And the trick is to always make that extra decimal place a zero. If it's more than zero, it won't be equivalent. It will have a higher value. It has to be zero to be the same. And then let's do one more together. Yes, this is 9.00. So if we want an equivalent decimal with three decimal places... 9.000. Yes. Actually, this one's a trick because there's no value in the decimals. We can just say 9. If the decimal numbers have no value, they're all zeros, it can just be said as 9. The whole number is 9. The decimals, no value. But I do this one to show you that no matter how many zeros we have already, just add another one on the end to be equivalent. Understand, guys? Okay, that was well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation to learn how to turn a two-digit decimal place number into a three-digit decimal place number of equivalent value. And we just use exactly the same trick we do for the previous lesson, add a zero at the end. We can't add a number any more than a zero because that would be a higher value, not equivalent. A zero makes the numbers the same or equivalent. And coming up, we've got a flashcards exercise for our students to practice how to write equivalent decimals correctly. But for now, guys, time for our stretch sequence. Let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we'll begin by doing some rotations. Left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Excellent, guys. And now we'll do five stretches to our right. One, two, three, four, five. And then five stretches to our left. One, two, three, four, five. Very good, guys. And then have a little shake, arms and legs. Shake it off. And now we'll take our right hand and we'll find our left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. To finish this session, guys, what we'll do is we'll do five star jumps. One, two, three, four, five. 
Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So what we've got now is a flashcards exercise for our students to practice how to write equivalent decimals from two decimal places to three, hundredths to thousandths. So teachers, what you'll need to do is print off the flash sheets for the lesson and cut the numbers into individual strips of paper. And what we'll do, we'll invite students to come forward, choose a flashcard, write that number on the board, and then demonstrate how to write the equivalent decimal number in three places. Okay, guys, so now we need our decimal numbers and flashcards. But first of all, I'll clean the board. Okay, so we have our flashcards, and I think today our first student can be Nadia. Come and join me at the front of class, please. Nadia gets first pick today. You get first choice of the flashcards, Nadia. Okay, so can you pick one and show it to your friends, please? Three point zero nine. So you can see we have two decimal places, hundredths. Nadia will demonstrate how to turn this into thousands. But first of all, Nadia, can you write this number on the board? Three point zero. Nine. Okay, so what we need to do next, or what Nadia needs to do, is to draw the equal sign. And now, Nadia will demonstrate how to write the equivalent decimal number with three decimal places. So Nadia will go three point zero nine. Excellent, Nadia. Very well done. Nadia has added the zero to the end of the two-digit decimal place number. So what we've got here is we've got nine hundredths and ninety thousandths. But that's the same value or equivalent. So let's say the two numbers together, guys. 3.09 equals... 3.090. And that's what we mean by equivalent decimals. Nadia, that was brilliant. High five. And a big round of applause for Nadia, please, guys. So, teachers, you can see the activity that we're doing in our classroom now. You can pause the video and play on in your own classroom with your own students for the next 12 to 13 minutes. And what we're going to do is carry on playing here. And remember, choose a different student for each flashcard. And then when the student has correctly written the numbers, have the entire class practice speaking together. So next student, guys. But first of all, I'll clean the board. Okay, so the next student that I would like to invite forward is Pat. Come and join me at the front, please, Pat. Now it's Pat's turn to choose his flashcard. And can you show it to your friends, please, Pat? So what's the number on Pat's flashcard, guys? 1.23. Okay, so what Pat needs to do first, can you write this number on the board, please, Pat? 1.23. And then the equal sign again. Okay, so we have our two-digit decimal place number. Now Pat will demonstrate how to turn this into a three-digit decimal place number of equivalent value. So Pat, can you write your number? We've got 1.23. Excellent. You see, every time we just add a zero on the end for the equivalent decimal. 23 hundredths is the same as 230 thousandths, equivalent decimals. So let's say the two numbers together, guys. 1.23 equals 1.230. The same, or equivalent. Pat, that was brilliant. High five. Big round of applause for Pat, please, guys. OK, 
Okay, next student, but first of all, a clean board. And now I would like to invite Dan to come and join me at the front of class, please. Dan's turn to choose a flashcard and show it to your friends, please, Dan. So what number is on Dan's flashcard or what numbers? 7.05. So first thing to do, please, Dan, is to write this number on the board. 7.05. And then the equal sign. Okay, now Dan will demonstrate how to turn this two-digit decimal place number into an equivalent three-digit decimal place. So we always start with the same number, 7.05, and then zero at the end. Five hundredths is the same as fifty thousandths. Equivalent decimals. So let's say the two numbers together. 7.05 7. equals 7.050. 7. Down. That was brilliant. Well done. High five and a big round of applause for down, please, guys. Okay, let's carry on so some of more students can practice. Next, I would like to invite Chu to come and join me at the front of class, please. So Chu, your time to pick a flashcard. Excellent, and show it to your friends, please, Chu. Okay, so what number does Chu have on? <laughs> 3.38. So first thing to do, please, Chu, can you write this number on the board? 3.38. Perfect. And then the equal sign. Equals. Now Chu will demonstrate how to do a three-digit equivalent decimal. So once again, we always start with the same number, Chu. 3.38. Three. Yep, decimal place at the bottom, that's correct. And then three, eight. Well done, Chu. So what number does Chu have to add at the end to make it an equivalent? Zero. Always zero, okay? So Chu, now we need a zero at the end. You see, 38 hundredths is the same as 380 thousandths equivalent. So we can say 3.38 equals 3.380. Chu, can you say 3.3838 equals 3.380? 380. Excellent. Well done, Chu. High five. Big round of applause for Chu, please, guys. And let's do one more together before you have to do it yourself with the worksheet. So next, I would like to invite Net. Come and join me at the front of class, please, Net. And pick a flashcard and show it to your friends. Okay. So what's the number on Net's flashcard? 2.23. Okay, so the first thing to do, Net, is write this number on the board. 2.23. Okay, and now Net, the equal sign. So, once again, all we need to do is write 2.23. You can write 2.23 again. And then, Net, what number do we need to add at the end to make it equivalent? Zero. Excellent. 23 hundredths is the same as 230 
thousands. So altogether, 2.23 equals 2.230. Equivalent decimals. Two decimal places with three decimal places. Net, very well done. High five and a big round of applause for Net, please, guys. And now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every student in your class gets their own worksheet because it's time for them to work by themselves to show their understanding. And what we've got today is a worksheet that's similar to the previous exercise in the last lesson. But what we've got to do today is choose which of the equivalent three-digit decimals is the same as the two-digit decimal. But we use exactly the same trick, guys. Take your two-digit decimal place number in the hundredths and find the one with the same as the zero at the end in the thousandths. So give our students around 10 to 12 minutes for this activity and just help them with anything they need. So what's the first thing to do, guys? Name Names on top. Excellent. So, Ned, this one's for you. You're welcome. Pat, here's yours. You're welcome. Nadia, for you. You're welcome, Chu, for you. Thank you. You're welcome, Dan, for you. Thank you. You're welcome, Frau, here's yours. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Bang Bon, for you. Thank you. You're welcome, and Lakau, for you. So names on top first, guys, and then choose which is the equivalent decimal, A, B, or C. All you need to do is draw a circle around. No writing for this exercise, just circling to show your understanding. And it's the same trick, always with the zero at the end. For example, the first one, 3.11, we're looking for 3.110, which is B. Excellent, Ned, well done. Well done, Pak Bung. You see, everybody can understand because they learned how to do it yesterday. Great to see you guys. Excellent too. You see, every time we just have the same number with the zero at the end. That's perfect. Well done, Nadia. You see, every time, just a zero at the end. Perfect. Excellent, Lakau. So remember, guys, if ever you see the words equivalent again in future, not just with math, it can be anything. Equivalence basically means the same, because what we're looking at here is decimal numbers of equivalent or same value. Just because it has one digit more, as long as that digit is zero, they're the same value. Excellent, Ned. Very well done. Well done, Pat. Very good. Excellent, Nadia. Very good. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet exercise and showed their understanding of how to turn equivalent decimals between two and three digits by circling the correct ones. My students here all did an excellent job, so very well done, guys. That was great. <laughs> and that's all we have time for today. So we hope you've enjoyed the lesson and found it interesting and now understand about equivalent decimals. Whether it's one decimal place with two digits or two decimal places with three digits, all we need to do is always add a zero at the end. And that means that both numbers will be equivalent decimals. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.